Teaching a course in an academic institution requires supplemental materials. These materials might be a textbook, software required for the course, or even supplies used within the semester on course projects. So don't forget to include these items on your syllabus. The most obvious is the textbook. You need to let the students know what textbooks you'll be using throughout the semester. List all the textbooks and clearly indicate if they're required, recommended, or supplemental for the course. Students are often on a tight budget and watch the purchase of their textbooks carefully because they're so expensive. One thing I do on my syllabus is when I list the course schedule, I include the chapter that I expect the students to have read for that class. This way, the students, even when they first view the syllabus, can see that the required book I assign for class is relevant to the topics I teach each week. Listing the topic and chapter helps to reinforce why you require the textbook. It's also not a bad idea to quiz or review those chapters in class. Reviewing or quizzing once or twice a semester ensures students will pay attention to your required readings of the textbook. You may also want to indicate if a used textbook is acceptable and what version of the book you're expecting for the class. If possible, include cost and purchase locations of the book. Let the students know if it can be found online and list the URL. If you are going to reserve readings, let the students know it and how they can obtain those readings. At our university, the library staff can actually create a customized website with links to required and recommended readings. I place that URL on my syllabus. This gives students a single location where they can find all the reading materials for the class and associated links. In today's academic classroom, textbooks are not the only resource for students. In fact, in many classes, certain types of software are required. For instance, in statistics class, often some statistical software like SPSS is required. Sometimes the school supplies the software and sometimes it doesn't. Make it clear to the students whether or not they can gain access to the software via campus resources. And if they can, provide them the necessary links and other information. If they can't, give them clear instructions on how to locate the needed software. If your course is online, give instructions on what browser is most compatible with the school's online software, what downloads are needed, and any other specific technical information. You want the students to be able to access the online course as easily and seamlessly as possible. For online courses, I often indicate some recommended headphones and microphone combinations so the students know what to purchase. I find that if I don't specify good headphones and speaker combinations, the students often buy a cheap version that doesn't have good quality and it sounds horrible when they speak online. While headphones seem like an easy supply to consider, don't forget other supplies. For example, if you teach elementary education, you might need students to purchase construction paper for use in projects or even bring their own glue and scissors. In my class, I expect students to create a professional, spiral-bound proposal. I find that describing what I expect them to buy during the course of the semester in terms of supplies avoids unnecessary panic and worry among the students because they know what to budget for and how to expense it. Listing the textbooks or books required, the software requirements, and any additional supplies for the class helps students to budget their needs at the beginning of the semester and creates a learner-friendly syllabus that clearly spells out what is needed from a materials perspective for them to achieve success.